Good morning. If you can get up here. Thanks for being here this morning. Coming to worship with us. If you're a visitor, we ask you that you'd please fill out a visitor's card. Just drop it in one of the box back there. Or leave it on a pew or hand it to someone as you leave. Uh, that will work. Um, our Bible time. Just before we have our lesson, we have our song just before our lesson. Seven years old and down usually head this way. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's been growing and growing and growing. And there's more kids and more kids and more kids. So they have had to split into three classes. So today when you go back there, they, you may be directed to a different room. One and two-year-olds will be in the toddler room. Three and four-year-olds will be in pre-K and five through seven in first and second grade class. All around me up here is uh, stuff from Vacation Bible School. We had, we had a great turnout for Vacation Bible School. If you was in va va Vacation Bible School, stand up. Please. Nobody's standing up. Come on now. Y'all going to make it hard for me here in a minute. All right. There we go. Thank you. One of, the, one, of the things, one of the things that we drilled home, and, and this year's theme was praise the Lord. One of the verses that we drilled home was up behind me. So we're going to do it just like we did at Vacation Bible School. So everyone has to speak out. And all y'all that don't know what's going on, you'll pick it up really quick. I will, I will. Praise, the praise the Lord at all times. At all times. I, will I will praise the Lord at all times. At all times. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will, I will praise the Lord at all times. Our first song this morning is Glory Land Way. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I'm in the way. first prayer this morning, we'll sing, Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is
What an incredible sight to see such a nice full congregation. It's great to be here. Let's go to God in prayer. Our loving God and our Father in heaven, it's indeed a great privilege to be here amongst fellow members, brothers and sisters in Christ, like believers. We're so thankful, Father, for this time set aside that we can come and worship you. We're thankful, Father, for the week past, for the blessings showered upon us, for this wonderful land that we live in that we can call home. We're thankful, Father, for the answered prayers and those prayers yet to be answered. We know that you will always come through and you always have done in the past. We're thankful, Father, for the good health that so many of us enjoy. And that being said, we pray for those who are not as fortunate at this time. We ask that you might comfort them, if it be your will, that you'll heal them and return them to us that we might all be able to worship together. Our Father, we pray for those who are not with us for other reasons. We think of those on the military, those who protect us, those first responders, who always step up and say, don't worry, I have your back. We pray for them, Father, that you might be with them, protect them as they protect us. We pray, Father, for those who are traveling, that they might be granted traveling mercies, that you watch over them, take them safely to their destinations. Our Father, we pray for the government of this country. We pray that they might make, they might make decisions that is beneficial to us all, and that ultimately we all have the same goal in life, is to reach you. We pray, our Father, that you'll forgive us for our sins, for there are many. We know we fall weak, we, we fall short of your expectations. We ask, us, we ask our Father that you'll help us to stand up, dust ourselves off, and walk in the right path. Be with us as we, we hear the lesson this morning. Help us to understand what is being taught, that we might apply it to our lives. Above all things, we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Before the Lord's Supper this morning, we'll sing Beautiful Lamb. Thank you. 
Good morning. Scripture reading this morning is going to be in the uh, second chapter of John. Uh, right before these scriptures I'll be reading, Jesus has gone into the temple and cleansed the temple by turning over tables and uh, running the Jews out because it was basically the uh, flea market atmosphere by what we read. Uh, and he obviously upset a lot of people. Uh, in verse Verse 18 said, Then the Jews demanded of him, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. <clears throat> the Jews replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he was spoken of was his body. <clears throat> Obviously, we've, we've read this before, we've heard this before. Uh, Jesus is telling about his uh, death, burial, resurrection, that he's going to die for us all. He's going to destroy death. Where's your sting, O oh death? And he's going to have a place for us for eternity, as long as we live in him. I also find it pretty interesting in uh, verse 22, it says, after he was raised from the dead, the disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the word of Jesus that he had spoken. That gives me a lot of comfort because I know we, if you've been a Christian, I've been, I was baptized when I was 16, I'm 62. Um, there's a lot of things I have learned from 60 to 62 and from yesterday to today that has enlightened me. And I think uh, the disciples were with him for three years and they were still being enlightened and didn't quite understand it all. So if you're a young Christian, don't think you need to understand it all. The hand of God is gonna be on you as long as you're walking with God and you will understand more as we go. And what we need to understand today is that we have a home for eternity with, with God, which is super exciting. I would love if they pulled a bus up here and say, we're all heading out today. And I think everybody would be joyful and want to get on that bus. But we still got to bring people with us. So today we're celebrating that salvation plan that God put in place. It's a wonderful thing and a joyful thing that we can think about. So let's give, let's give thanks for the bread, which represents our Lord's death on the cross. Lord, we thank you so much for your plan of salvation. We can have confidence and we can have joy that we know that when this world, when we leave this world, that we're going to have eternal salvation and it's going to be a wonderful thing. Lord, help us do this with joy and think about what you've done because there's no other way for us to, this to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Lord, this fruit of the vine represents the blood that was spilled, the blood that cleanses us of all sins. We thank you for your plan, Lord, and we just pray that you will we will take this in a well-pleasing manner to you and forgive us of all of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 
We take up a collection because God tells us to give back. He has given us so much, as you know, uh, and he, he owns everything that we have. When we leave this world, <clears throat> we're coming, we're leaving with what we came in with. Uh, there are uh, contribution boxes in the back here. If uh, We pray that you'll participate in that. We're not asking our visitors to do that. Uh, this is a, a responsibility as uh, members of this church to take care of the body and the work is being done. Let's give thanks. Lord, you blessed us in so many ways that we get used to them sometimes. Lord, we just help us reflect on what you've given us, the place we live, the country we are, have the great opportunity to be in where we're not scared when we walk out the door that you were always walking with us and we have the freedom that we have, Lord. Just thank you and we pray that you will take these gifts and work your, work your plan. And Lord, we just pray that we bring more to you, to you and more to get on that bus, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Song before the lesson this morning will be Faithful Love. Let's stand as we sing this song. Faithful
I got to have some room. Uh, no, I just, if you have your Bible, if you would, uh, we'll get started in a second. Uh, turn to the book of Jude. It's where I'll be going first this morning. But I want to take this opportunity to say again, as one of the shepherds and all three of us, along with Jody and Jed uh, and Jared and all the others, I just appreciate so much all that took place with Vacation Bible School. A lot of individual effort, a lot of beautiful work done and up and down to be ready for assembly today, but what a great turnout, as Edwin has already said, but let me just again say what a great thing. And that'll be happening again next year, so if you have an opportunity, please get involved if that can work for you at all. The book of Jude. We studied it the other day, but I want you to take a look at that guy in the picture. You see him as like, just like I do. He's right there. And Jude wrote to Christians, and this is what he said. Beloved, I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. I know you're still looking for him. That's a broken rule that a teacher shouldn't do. But that's okay. Now I've got your attention. So please notice. For certain men have crept in unnoticed and deny the only Lord in Jesus Christ. He goes on to say. They crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and do what many do today and deny Jesus Christ, deny the Lord God and Jesus Christ. I want you to know that that is not something that just started in the book of Jude. Take your Bible and run back with me to, in history to 1 Kings. You remember the great stories of David, David and Goliath, David the great king, the great, great man that took care of everything for God. He had some transgression in his life, but anyway, he had a son named Solomon. And Solomon was one of the wisest and wealthiest, and as we move forward in the life of Solomon, we'll know that in 1 Kings chapter 12 that he dies. We will know after the kingdom is separated, his son Rehoboam takes charge. But a warring gentleman named Jeroboam is then made the, and I'm going to move forward a little quicker with this story, but after the death of Solomon, Jeroboam was made king of the ten northern tribes. And to prevent the people from going back to Jerusalem to worship, as they were told to do, and as God told them to do, and he was worried about they would leave his reign and go back and serve under Rehoboam. You can continue to read there. Guess what he decided to do? He invented a religion of convenience. Man, y'all don't want to be making that trip. You don't want to be going there. You don't want to be making that travel down there. I will do everything that Rehoboam has done. I will put an altar and a priest in Dan. I will put one in Bethel. And you won't have to go anywhere. But please notice what it says in 1 Kings 12, 30. It says, this thing became sin. And so what we see happening is something that wasn't the real thing. They went away from what God said and they said, I'm going to do it because it will be convenient for me. It'll be a convenient thing that I can do. And this thing becomes sin and he deceives the people 
with a new religion. And as we go on to read a little bit, we know all about that. So what he really does is start something new. He makes himself a counterfeit. Now, a counterfeit, the definition is in front of you. It is an imitation of something very valuable or something important with the intent to deceive or defraud. In other words, I'm going to change it up and it'll be pretty close. And you might not be able to figure it out. But I think that you probably can. And if I was talking to you today about counterfeit, I would talk about the things that we think of right away. And one of those is money. Because if you've given a 10, 20, maybe even a $100 bill that most of you carry, when you're checking out, you'll notice the girl takes that pen out and she'll mark through it to make sure it's real. But you know, money's something that we would certainly understand. But did you know that counterfeits to defraud people Shoes is the second most counterfeited thing on the market. People are trying to sell Nike, all of those things, and they are counterfeiting them. They're putting other materials in, getting them from other places. And I'm not interested in purses and handbags, but they said that's number three. That they try to get you to... They defraud you by telling you this is what it is, but it's not that. And then, of course, you're well aware of, and I could go on with diamonds and rubies and all that other, but jewelry is counterfeitly fitted, mainly watches. And they do a lot of that. So it is something that we completely understand that, that that's what counterfeiting is. So when we think of that, that's what we do. I want you to know also... Just as we saw Jeroboam do, it wasn't called Christianity back then, but it was called worshiping God as God told them to do in Jerusalem. I want you to know that today, circulating around about us, there are men that are going unnoticed, preaching a foreign gospel. There are people going out and trying to get people away from the real thing and they deceive and defraud by presenting something different. In much the same way, in much the same way, we can be fooled with products, money, and all of those other things. I want you to know that there is a danger of having a counterfeit faith. In other words, having been deceived by something that somebody's told you. Maybe depending on who they are or what they've said or whether... That just seems so agreeable to me. I like that better. I like that better. And we are in a danger of falling away and worshiping something else. Listen, we don't have to worry too much about talking about going back to Jeroboam and seeing what the Word of God said there. We don't have to worry about getting all the way to Jude. We can go right to the life of Christ. And we can read in the book of Matthew chapter 24 that he said very plainly in chapter 24, verses 11 through 13, he warned about false prophets that would be coming. Here they come. They will come after me, and the love of many would grow cold. In other words, the love for the gospel, for the good news, would grow cold, and those that would endure to the end with what they have believed would be saved, but the others would not. And so the danger of apostasy was always in our word sent to us from God, whether the Old Testament or the New. People were falling away. And if it was present in the first century A.D., you can be assured it's present around us today. That there are people that are following a counterfeit, and I use that word, a fake a fraudulent gospel, and they are beginning to believe it rather than following what God has said. So how do we avoid counterfeit Christianity? You know, this ain't going to be too tough for you to understand how we avoid it. It's going to be very simple for you. And I would hope that if you are zeroed in on the Word of God and you are following what I am saying, 
that you would understand how we can avoid it. How can we get the real Christianity that is found in God's Word? Well, I think the first and most important thing that we have to do is we have to get the real gospel. We can't be chasing something else. In the book of Galatians, if you'll turn over there, and let's just take a look at the book of Galatians, and that would be in Galatians chapter 1. It's so interesting to me that, that Paul was so disappointed with them because of the fact that they so quickly went away from what they knew to be right. And notice what it says in verse 6, reading through verse 9. I marvel, and this is Paul writing to that group of Christians, the churches in Galatia, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. I'm amazed that you're letting that happen, he says. It, um, it's unbelievable to me, Paul says, that you would let that happen so quickly. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what you have been, had preached to you, let him be accursed. And here he goes again in verse 9, as I said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. So I want to tell you it's a prevalent thing back in New Testament time. The prevalence is there. It's all over the place. But you know, many today are being deceived in much the same way. Even though they might know the truth and might have at first one time learned the truth, now they have gone to where they're following something else. What we need to understand is the gospel, the good news that we can read in the Word of God is sufficient. It is from God. It is sent from God through these inspired men, through the Holy Spirit, and it comes from God. Throughout the gospel, we're warned about accepting new revelations from somewhere else. But yet we back off and say, Ah, oh, let them do their own thing. Ah, that looks a little better to me. But I'm going to tell you, we need to avoid counterfeit Christianity. I taught in the first quarter, or excuse me, last quarter, First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus in my class. And I could not believe, and if you'll turn over to First Timothy, I'm just going to share with you just a few things briefly. And I would want you to notice this, how worried the apostle, again, the Holy Spirit slash God was worried about this. As Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy, notice with me, if you will, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, Timothy, I want you to remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. And so there was a concern by Timothy about that. He was very concerned about what was taking place. And then if you'll just flip to 2 Timothy, read there with me in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1 through 4, he's telling Timothy again, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, at his appearing in the, his kingdom, preach the word, be ready, in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. He goes on to write to Timothy. So here again is a situation where it is taking place 
just going and going and going. And then if you have your Bible, keep turning and go to the book of 2 John. Not far away. 2 John, verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're after in our life. We're not after chasing something that is made up or false or make-believe or whatever. And it goes on to say that uh, the Word says, it matters what we finally believe. It matters. It is of a great concern to God. He would not have enlisted men to write this in epistle after epistle after epistle and tell story about the danger of what was happening. We must obey the gospel and worship in exactly the way that God commands it. That is what we need to be about and what we need to do. And it matters what we do. There is not some sort of magical formula where we can move away from how God says he wants to be worshipped. We know about, the, about Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the well. We know exactly what he said to her. Listen, it's not going to be happening in all these places you think's happening. Worship is going to be when you glorify God and you worship him in spirit and in truth. And that is John 4. 21 through 24, in spirit and in truth. And the worship has to follow that pattern. Otherwise, we're following something that is man-made and is moving away from us. And we need to be very careful about that. And then finally, I want you to know it matters if we grow. That's how we're going to avoid counterfeit Christianity, by our growth spiritually, by our reading the Word of God, by our knowing what it says. It's very important that we understand that. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, he goes on to say, to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, by growing in that grace and that knowledge of what the Word of God says, is going to be the only way we can identify a counterfeit. You and I aren't going to have a marker that we stroke across a $100 bill. What we're going to have is a, the sword, the Word of God, that we can confirm everything with. We can look to it, and we will know that it is the truth. Ever wonder why you're encouraged to attend Bible class? Ever wonder why you're encouraged to be part of a small group? Ever wondered why you're encouraged to be part of lessons that are given from this pulpit by various preachers to encourage you about Wednesday night, our summer series starting? Ever wonder why? Because we know how important the Word of God is that we can identify, that's not right in my life spiritually. I need to make that adjustment. I need to be the one to make that adjustment. And that's the way that happens. So we avoid counterfeit Christianity through our growth, and that's what we need to be about. That's why all of those things that we encourage are so very important. The second thing is, I think we need to avoid counterfeit, how we can avoid it by getting the real salvation. You know, there's a lot of, lot of wishy-washy things going on, uh, on out there that if I do this, I can gain salvation. Maybe if I work hard enough or I'm good enough guy morally or maybe by my faith only that I believe that maybe that's enough for me to get there. And there's a lot of that that floats by our ears every year. But the really what it comes down to the solid fact of the matter is we need to believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is where the answer is. You know, people have to understand that real, uh, real salvation starts with our identifying of Jesus Christ. We have to be able to recognize that He is God in human flesh that came and lived and died, and we need to honor that. Acts 2.36 tells us that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So we know that to be true. 
And so it requires us also the fact of, you know, getting the real salvation. I've got to change the way I live. And some people are just not happy with that. But I'm going to be the fact of the matter is the word of God tells us that we need to repent and repent and turn away from sins. That we also need to be one to confess Jesus as the Lord. I understand that you are the Lord and master of my life. And that's where it needs to be. And then finally, it requires us being baptized for the forgiveness of sins. You know, there's nothing mystical back here in this water. Nothing at all. Nothing at all except because of what you have heard. You know that that is what God asks us to do. Being baptized for the remission of our sins. Acts 2.38. What do we have to do? Be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins. And then finally, we've got a way to avoid counterfeit Christianity by really showing great love for Jesus. And when we show great love for Jesus, we are able to, real love for him comes about because it's rooted in obedience to his will. John 14, 15 tells us that, uh, John 14, 15 tells us when he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And then even Matthew 7, 21 through 23 is one that we repeat often. Just because, you know, Lord, Lord, just because you're calling my name doesn't mean you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's who who does my will. So then we have to have submission to his will. Believing the gospel, knowing that by obeying the gospel... Being a member of the one body, submitting to the right plan of salvation, it requires us sacrificing and putting him first in every aspect of my life, putting Jesus first. Our small groups falling in love with Jesus has pushed us in that direction, and that's a wonderful thing because we need to be in love with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is something that we all need to be a part of. But I want to remind you, as you find the man in the picture, there are certain men that have crept in unnoticed and deny the only Lord God in Jesus Christ. They're everywhere, and I hope you're not one of them. I hope you're not one that denies that he is Lord and Jesus Christ. If we can help you in responding to the gospel call, we hope that you'll make that known today. We've got all things ready. And also, let me just say to you, I might not be the very best teacher available or the very best personality to teach you if you have questions. But I'm going to tell you what, we got somebody who is. We've got the Word of God and we've got just unlimited resources available if you have questions about your salvation or questions about the Christianity that you're following and are somewhat worried or concerned that they might not be exactly what the Word of God says. If we can assist you today as we sing a song of encouragement, we invite you to come.
Thank you for being here this morning. If I could have Olivia Alderman, Davis Collins, and Michaela Lucas come up, and then Samantha Carswell is also in the back. It looks like she's coming up as well. <clears throat> if you want to just come and stand right here. So uh, as many of you know, I'm, I'm very uh, privileged to uh, work with our young people, uh, especially the teenagers. And uh, I know I benefit a lot from that. Hopefully they benefit just a little bit from me working with them. Um, but today is a special day. Uh, as you know, uh, graduation has been happening over the last couple of weeks. And so today we have an opportunity to honor our high school uh, graduates that are among us. Um, I know how high school was pretty challenging when I was in high school several years ago. Um, I don't know whether high school is, is, was harder for you guys than it was for me, if it's more challenging. But I do know that, that these guys have been through a lot of challenges that none of us that are older than them experience. I mean, they went, you know, COVID, that crazy thing that we, seems to be never ending, they went through high school during that. Shutdowns, you know, high school events closed, sports seasons ended early. They, they went through all these things. And so I know it's been a challenge for them, and so I'm proud of them for accomplishing what they've accomplished. I know their families are, are proud of them. And I wish I could say it gets easier from here, um, but I don't think it will if, if, if life experience tells me anything. Um, but there's two things I want to encourage you all to do uh, as you enter adulthood, as, as you go throughout your lives. There's two things that I want to become really important to you. Number one is this right here, the Bible, the Word of God. Um, life is going to be challenging, but I know that if this becomes very important to you, if this is at the center of your life, your relationship with God and His Word is at the center of your life, it's going to be a lot easier. The Word of God teaches you how to deal with conflict, how to deal with suffering, to deal with loss, how to deal with success, the good times in life. You know, this, this is actually a very important Bible to me. This was given to me the day I graduated high school. Um, and so it has been with me uh, in my adult life. It's really important to me. And I want to share with you a, a passage uh, that you know, this was given to me by some very, very close friends and, and mentors uh, of me as I was growing up. And I want to share with you a passage that they, they wrote in it. And it's from Isaiah 41 and verse 10. It says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And that's God addressing the, the nation of, of Israel. But I think it's just as applicable to you today. Israel was God's chosen people. And we're God's chosen people now as children of God. And so that's my encouragement for you. Don't be anxious. Don't fear. Children of God can get through life. It's challenging, but with God and with his word, I know you can do it. The, the other thing I want to become really important to you is this group of people right here. It, it's tough. Life is tough, but it's a lot easier when you have people who care about you, who are supporting you, and want you to get to heaven. So I want to do something. If you're here this morning and you are willing to do whatever it takes to support these young people, to encourage them, to help them get to heaven. Would you stand and show them that? If you're willing to do that? That's, I don't know, 250 or more people that are here to support you, that are here for you, to encourage you, to help you through difficult times. It's going to be challenging. But with this group of people, it's going to be a lot easier. So that's my encouragement today. And uh, we're going to have another opportunity to celebrate uh, our graduates today, as you see on the, on the screen um, from two to four at Betty Cakes, you can stop by, come and go. They'll be there. Um, you can share some words of encouragement with them, talk with them, uh, find out what their plans are. Uh, so I would just encourage you to take a little bit of time this afternoon to do that as well. But if you would bow with me, we're going to pray for these young people. Our Heavenly Father, we're especially grateful now for, for these four young people, Davis, Michaela, Olivia, Samantha. We're proud of them and the accomplishment that they have achieved. We know this is not the end of their story. It is really just the beginning. And so we especially ask that you be with them, 
that you watch over them, that you guide them, and we know that you will. We pray that you bless them in all that they set out to do. Most of all, Father, we pray that they will turn to you, that they will seek your kingdom first. They, they will let you be at the center of every decision they make, that they will follow your word and your son's example. Father, we ask that you help us, help their families, help us to support them in whatever they do, to help them get through life, to most of all, to help them get to heaven and get to know you more. And Father, we just pray that you will continue to watch over them and watch over all of us. We know that life is difficult, but we know that with you and with your church, it is much easier. It's in your son's name we pray all these things. Amen. As you can see, greeters are needed. In the back in the foyer on the table over on the side, there's a sign-up sheet. Uh, it's pretty blank. So we need some of y'all to sign up, get ready uh, to help. If you have any questions about it, see the, uh, Eric here, our song leader, and he will help you. Um, one thing about the four that were just up here, I was looking at them, and years and years and years ago when they were about this tall, we would come down here on Sunday evening and sit on these pews right here and sing songs. And, and I actually, I need them to come back whenever they can and help me with those kids and teaching them some of those songs. Because it was evident to me yesterday that the little ones don't know the songs we used to know. So that would be some of my fault, but y'all need to come help me do that. Um, I, have, I have a note here that Steve has uh, been in the hospital but gone home. Well, Steve's not just gone home, he's at service this morning. Uh, please don't flood him because I know he doesn't look like he feels up to real good snuff yet. But he is here and we're glad to have him. Mark uh, Forshaw uh, gave me this note before services. Mark and Terry Forshaw would like to thank the congregation for their prayers, cards, after their recent motor ac motorcycle accident. We are mostly recovered and appreciate everyone's concern. So they thank you. Uh, this week, Gary Ernst will be having a procedure on Thursday. Please keep Gary in your prayers. Um, members, remember the five minute rule when we break out. We have opportunities today still for small groups as Wayne's already mentioned. We are in the book of Luke, 10th or 11th chapter I studied this week, but I forgot which one I was reading. I think it's both. Uh, but anyway, be there for that. We'll have our last one at 6 o'clock in the back, A1 room back here. It'll be put back together by then. Um, and then summer series starts Wednesday night. Name above all names. Philip Roberts, Robertson will be here, and he was going to speak to us on King Jesus. King Jesus. So be here at 7 o'clock for that, and then we'll have tw uh, 10 more men behind him. Uh, also, Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, there's a time for a service in. Brother Eric. We'll work till Jesus comes. Oh,
you know, when I was in high school, I didn't know it was ahead of me either, so let's uh, shake their hands uh, once we leave today. But uh, let's pray. Lord, we come to you with many things, many prayers to ask of you for us, efforts we're trying to accomplish, um, things to better ourselves in our walk with you. But let us come to you and show love to you, as that will pave the way for us. We also pray for those graduates today. Um, they do have a long road, but um, with you, things will be made um, easier and more clear. Um, like was also said this morning, we can learn from the pattern of the Bible, not the pattern of the world. We sang this morning about amazing love, faithful love, and grace. This praise does give us the strength we are in need of. Let's let this praise show in our faces and our attitudes this week. Lord, many are traveling and are sick um, within our congregation, visitors, friends, family members. Um, please be with them and bring them safely back to us. Lord, also be with the eldership of this congregation. Um, help them to guide us and direct us into the right way to a good path. Also, um, VBS this past week, we, we think that's a, a beautiful thing and really teaching the younger generation the right path to go and, and providing a good example. Um, please guide, guard, and direct us. Forgive us of all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.